Howdy, everybody. Welcome to week 12. Well, I got a couple more weeks left. A uh, quick reminder on the final project that is due in week 14. That's been open for several weeks. Um, if you haven't started it already, I highly suggest that you get started on your final project. Just start plugging away at it to get it done. Um, it's actually not that bad, but it's worth 200 points. So it's super important that you get it done. Super important that uh, if you have any questions about it, you let me know ahead of time because it's not really going to be the opportunity to turn it in late. So let me know if you have any questions about the final project and uh, we'll get there. So to this week, I'm, we're going to be covering macros and then we have a letter review assignment. I'm going to go over macros first and then the letter review. But first, let me tell you macros. Be very careful with macros and all that you do. Word, Excel, whatever program you're using, macros can be very dangerous. They can harm your computer. They can cause things to freak out and not work the way they should. So just want to get that caution out there in the open. Just let you know. Okay. So macros. What is a macro? A macro enables you to do things in repetition with a few quick keystrokes or just with a button in Word. So let's say I wanted to create a letterhead that always has the same header, has the same footer, has the same title, font, and style. Now I'm going to do that one really quick and I'll show you how to uh, set up the macros. So by default, Word does not have macros available. So what you're going to want to do is open up Word, go to File, and then Options. And then from Options, you want to go to Customize Ribbon. And then when you're in Customize Ribbon, on the right-hand side, under Main Tabs, you want to find the developer option right here. So you're going to check that, click OK, and then the developer ribbon shows up here. In the developer ribbon, there are the items for macros up here. So when, I, when you are ready to record a macro, you're going to click this button to record a macro. But let me, let, let, me, let me give you some words of wisdom here about macros. They are frustrating. Uh, they can be very time-consuming. Sometimes more time consuming than it would be just to create the documents over and over again manually, but they do have their place. But let me warn you that it's going to take you probably four or five times, four or five attempts to get a macro correct. I've been using macros for decades and sometimes I was just, I was just preparing for this video. Uh, it took me three times to get the macro correct because I forgot certain steps. So be very methodical about how you're doing a macro. Uh, if you skip one step, then it just doesn't work or it doesn't work the way you want it to. So the good thing is you can always delete the macro and then try again. But let me, let me reiterate that again. Be patient. Macros are difficult and they're very frustrating. And if you go in the wrong order or if you miss a step, you're gonna have to do it over again. That's perfectly all right. Just expect that this is going to take you four or five attempts at least. If it takes you less than that, bonus. You get a gold star, you're awesome, and you have a bright future in the use of macros. So I do not, unfortunately. It just takes – I try to go too fast. Anyways, so let's record a macro, a macro here. I'm going to create a default header, a little intro, and put a little style in here. So when you click on the record macro button – going to ask you what you want your name to be. I'm just going to name my default header and intro. You could either have it a button, which will show up, you know, as a button, or you could do a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to choose keyboard shortcut, and then I want to store my macro in all documents. So no matter what document I'm opening, I'll have that macro available to me. You could do it document by document and just say just this one document, I want this macro to be available. But for the purpose of what we're doing, let's do all documents. Let's create a keyboard macro, and then you get this window that opens and says, basically what it's asking you is, what does you want the shortcut key to be to start to enable the macro? When you're just opening Word, you want to use the macro, what keyboard shortcut do you want to use? So I'm going to do, let's do Alt-Shift-Y. Pretty sure I don't have anything that uses Alt-Shift-Y. So I pressed Alt, Shift, and Y, and now it comes up with my shortcut key. And I'm going to uh, assign that. And then I'm going to click Close. 
Now we're in recording mode. The way you can tell is because next to my cursor, there's a little frowny face recording. It's actually a cassette tape, but it looks like a frowny face recording. I always associate that with with macros because sometimes it gets frustrated. I get frustrated and I have a frowny face. Okay. There are options here that you can pause recording and stop recording. Um, You can just pause and that way you can do something that you don't want to be part of the macro. Uh, but for the purpose of what we're doing, I'm going to continue. So I'm going to go to home. Just know that Word is recording all of the steps that you're doing right now. So I'm going to say I want my style to be no space. I want my font to be 14. And I want this to be Arial Nova bold. And then I'm going to double click on my header. And I'm just going to say, hey, I always want a number on the right hand side of it, the documents that use this macro. Then I'm going to close the header and I'm going to hit enter twice. I'm going to put my name, just put a fictitious, fictitious address in here in Memoville, Idaho. Doubt that exists. All right. So I just created that macro really quick. I'm going to go to developer. I'm going to say stop recording. Now the macro has stopped recording. If I go to the macros button here, I can see that my macro exists. If you want to go to see what this macro looks like, you can go to edit. What edit does is it opens up a Visual Basic editor. Visual Basic is a programming language that Windows uses, and it actually shows you all of the code that goes into this macro. So just that little macro that I did takes up this much code. Um, you can try and understand it if you want, but basically it's just a bunch of, uh, programming statements. There's some end if statements in there. Don't have to worry about that kind of stuff, but just to know that it's there and I can close this window. All right. So this document is now, my macro is now done. I'm going to close this document and I'm going to go back in word, create a new document. And my macro is Alt Shift Y. So if I do Alt Shift Y, dun, 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 look, I have no space style. My header is already there with the number and my address is already in there. So that's what a macro does. It enables you to do certain things very, very quickly. Um, I find the macros get used more in Excel than in Word because there's some really cool and awesome stuff you can do with macros in Excel. Word, it's handy for just setting stuff up. Like if I wanted my uh, tab alignments or I wanted my margins to be a certain way on every document or certain documents, you can create macros. But then you have to remember what those keystrokes are or you have to remember where the button is at. So just so you know, if you go back into the developer tab and you go to macros, you can always select the macro and delete it. It'll ask you, do you really want to delete it? Say yes. And hit close. And the macro is gone. I recommend that when you are done doing macros, go turn them off. Take the developer tab out. So go back to customize ribbon, go to developer, unselect that, and uh, turn them off. That's just my recommendation because it can be dangerous. So that is macros in a nutshell. Please be aware it's going to be frustrating. Mac, PC, doesn't matter what you're using. Follow the steps. You know, make sure you don't skip any steps or try and do things too fast. Uh, if you if you messed up a macro while you're recording it, you can always go back in and delete it. It's, that's what I did. That's what a lot of people are going to do. Okay. So then the other assignment that we have this week is the letter review. And the letter review... Um, It's just you're creating a letter and then you're going to write three paragraphs explaining these, you know, answering these questions. What are the advantages of using a split window? Why you'd use it? And how do you print just one section of a document? So I'm going to just show you the split window and printing a section. So I have a two page document here. A split window enables you to see the document twice. So this document here is the same as this document down here. Okay. You're just seeing it twice. It allows you to uh, look at different sections. It's really handy when you're looking at like legal documents and you need to reference two different parts of those documents. Um, 
or you just want to, you know, like, oh, I really like this, this sentence here. I want to add it to the end, but you don't want to have to like scroll to the end. So there's a couple different reasons why you'd use a split screen. You can also do side by side view. If you have two different documents that are open, you can have it uh, side by side. It's pretty handy if you have two different documents trying to compare them or something like that. All right. So that is the uh, split window. And then just uh, the, how do you just print one section of a document? It's super easy. So I'm going to remove my split. I'm going to highlight a section. I'm going to say the project plan section. Sweet. I only want to print that one. So I'm going to go to print and I can just say print selection. So under settings, there's the option to print all pages, print just the selection. I can print just the current page um, and I can do a custom print. Okay. So just printing a selection. It's pretty handy if you just, there's a, just a specific spot in the document that you want to print. doesn't necessarily show up in the preview, uh, but it'll just print the selection that you've selected. So I'm going to print this to PDF just to show you. And I'm going to do a test. And let's see if it printed for me. And there it is. Just the one section that I wanted printed. That was it. That's the, the gist of the assignment this week. Uh, there's a couple other things, making sure you have a, a sheet of labels, which we've already done. Uh, just know that these last few weeks, these are the highly advanced features of Word. Macros, uh, what we're doing in, uh, in, in uh, week 13, citations, table of contents. Those get to be the higher level stuff, but you're going you're gonna to wish that you had chapter 13 uh, in chapter one. Uh, the reason why I say that is, um, citations in word are probably one of the most handy features, uh, that word offers for students. Um, it saves me it, when I was going through my masters, it saved me hours of work creating bibliographies and citations. So it's going to be one that I'm super excited to let you guys know exists in word. If you want to skip ahead and go a little bit in the week and week 13 for citations, you'll be excited. Um, it is one of the more exciting features in word for students. It helps so much. It saves you so much time when you're writing papers, especially for English classes. So anyways, Hope you guys have a wonderful week. You guys are doing awesome work. I'm excited to see uh, the uh, the assignments and everything that it, that's been happening. And feel free to reach out and uh, give me a holler if you need anything. I'm here to help out. And uh, if there's any extenuating circumstances that are happening in your life and you need some extension on due dates, please feel free to email me, call me, text me, however you want to. Uh, just know that when we get into week 14, there's not a lot of flexibility with, with turning things in late because I had to get those final grades out, um, turn those around pretty quick. So uh, sorry for the lengthy video this week, but uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and, uh, and uh, I'm happy to help you. Take care.